And what's up, everybody? It's just Jay. Want to go over? Want to go over something? Are IBDs or inflammatory bowel diseases genetic, like Crohn's and colitis? I'm honestly gonna say this is what I call the genetic scapegoat for the most part. You know, it's, it, this seems to be a popular statement. I always hear this from many researchers, health professionals, doctors, you name it. You know, I'm not 100% positive what the answer is, but I'm going to share what I believe honestly to be a logical explanation of this whole ordeal if IBDs are genetic. And when I go back and I, when I think about everything, I w I'd agree that I do believe in many, in the majority of cases, I believe that there is there is a, some genetic component to IBDs and, other, and a lot of other gen of degenerative diseases, you know. And I look into my own situation and I can say, okay, my grandmother has ulcerative colitis and her sister happens to have Crohn's disease. Does that really mean that I was doomed from the beginning? Honestly, I think not. I look at genetics more like I look at genetics to being similar to a light switch. You think of a light switch and you realize there's always electricity behind the switch, but it's your decision to turn the light switch on or off that actually activates the electricity and turns the bulb on. You know, when we apply the same concept to IBDs, I think that a genetic component may be present. But the genetic component alone doesn't actually dictate if you get an IBD or not. Instead, I think if a person has a genetic component or what I would call a genetic susceptibility and they provide the right conditions such as like, you know, consuming the sad diet, a poor diet, high refined carbs, sugars, soda pops, high stress, the use of antibiotics, you name it. I think then, yeah, given that you have that genetic susceptibility along with this stuff I do think that you're quite likely to probably develop an IBD Does, do I think that this this statement applies to everyone not everyone but I definitely think it applies to the majority I speak with a lot of people with IBDs on on a weekly basis and and a large majority of people who share this genetic component they also state similar information to myself like they did have a poor diet they consume lots of like refined carbs and lots of sugars and they might have had antibiotics and lots of stress, you name it. You know, so do, do I think that, I think that it, it, there's a definitely some truth to it? For sure I do. And on the other end of things, I look at people who don't have the genetic component because there's a lot of people that, that suffer from no genetic component at all. And I ask them the same questions. I say, okay, in regards to your diet, how was your diet? A lot of people say to me, oh, I, I had a really poor diet. And I, I mentioned the antibiotics and the other things, and they also confirm those things as well, or at least one of the few. So I also see that Crohn's and any IBD, colitis, you name it, there's definitely a correlation behind this stuff, such as poor diet, antibiotics, you name it. You know, like I said, I don't think this applies to everybody. I'm Every time that I'll make a statement, maybe saying the majority, I'm always going to get the one or two people that say, you know what, no, that wasn't how I got it. You know, I disagree. You know, that wasn't how I got it. I lived, I had a perfect diet, you name it, blah, blah, blah. And I say, you know what, yeah, you know what, I, I can't rationalize exactly why you got the disease because maybe there is a small percentage that, there's something different. There's a different component that's causing the disease. This disease is not caused just by a, one thing. There's a whole bunch of things that probably play into part for actually getting the disease in, a, for, like in the first place. But I do definitely think for the large majority, a lot of these principles, these fundamentals, they do stay consistent. You know, so like I said, I can't address the, the few percent that aren't affected by this, but for the majority, I'm just stating an observation. And I want anybody that's listening to this that may share that genetic component, and not just the genetic component with Crohn's or colitis, but I mean a lot of things like arthritis or cancer, you name, breast cancer, you name it. Don't let some, don't let a genetic component or genetic susceptibility, you know, allow you to think that you're stuck with something, or that you can't change your circum, your circumstances, because usually that's very untrue. And and I look into my case where a lot of people that did suffer from that genetic component that are now med free and some for a lot longer than me 10 years 15 years if they they did suffer from that genetic component but they changed their lives and they worked backwards 
they changed they changed the condition and then they went back on the actual component and there's and, and things changed it's the same thing if you can learn from that genetic component so let's say for a person that says okay my mother had breast cancer or somebody suffered from breast cancer or a different disease such as diabetes learn from that don't consume a poor diet that's that's high in refined carbohydrates and sugars and soda pops and high stress and lack of exercise excessive meat intake you name it because a lot of these things along with that component are going to increase your chances of getting the disease so if I'm going to say for anybody if you haven't already have a disease that's due to this genetic component learn from it you know learn it use it as a lesson to change your future you know but like I said, hopefully you guys learn from this because I definitely think that a lot of people can learn from this and don't let genetic don't let a genetic scapegoat let you think that you're stuck with anything because of that genetic component. Thanks a lot. Hey, what's up? If you thought this video was awesome, informative, and hopefully inspiring, and you want to learn more about IBD issues, alternative treatments, and how others have overcome their disease to live amazing med-free lives, then click the link below to visit my site.